question. How and when did you first develop a feminist identity? I actually have an anecdote for that. Okay, great. <laughs> um, I, uh, in college, I had several roommates, and one of my roommates uh, was a very, very committed, politically active feminist, and identified as a feminist, and um, was always trying to sort of enlist the rest of us, and we were all tolerant, but mm -hmm. really weren't, weren't going there. And um, she ran the grill at our dorm. We had a grill. Okay. And she ran it <laughs> as a collaborative. <laughs> Because, of course, she would run it as a collaborative. It didn't make any money, and it lost some money. But I, I was not. Well, another of our roommates worked there. Okay. Um, and I tell you this because it's part of the setting. Okay. So where I... Where is the setting? Where, where at college. Where, which college? Harvard. Harvard, okay. uh, Harvard College, Harvard University, Mather House, the house grill, which okay. is on the bottom floor. So it's like, it's a kind of ugly concrete building, and there's a... A grill in the back and then the little tables and stairs that go up to the other public spaces. Okay. Um, so I, my interest in sexuality had very much preceded my uh, interest in feminism and I was, um, I was doing a paper for a class in the history of sexuality with Alan Brandt who just wrote a fantastic book on the history of smoking mm. um, and I was comparing the ways in which um, sex was described in the Kinsey Report on Women and in the Height Report, which was published in 76, and this is in 1983. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm reading the Height Report and got to a, a part of the Height Report that described how uh, essentially missionary position sex was really not particularly conducive to women having pleasure or orgasm. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, everything Helene had said clicked. Mm -hmm. It was just that one paragraph, page 136. <laughs> and I said, oh my god, I, I, I'm a feminist. <laughs> I get it. And I ran down to the grill where Helene was working and Tanya was eating the profits. And I said, Helene, I'm a feminist. I'm a feminist. I get it. And I'm carrying around my height report, showing her on the page what it was. And she burst into tears. And I burst into tears. And, uh, and we celebrated by uh, eating a huge amount of her homemade boursin cheese. <laughs> she had a great recipe for it. But so it was a very memorable mm -hmm. moment. And it was also completely connected to sexuality, which is where my... Uh, intellectual commitments had started out mm -hmm. and so it makes sense to me in retrospect that the context in which feminism suddenly became clear mm -hmm. and of course once you see it you never right. stop seeing it right basically gender inequities was what I saw mm -hmm. um, it, it's always been there ever since okay and did you have any involvement with the feminist movement after that um, I've never, I'm trying to think, I was never involved in NOW or any of the, uh, orga any organized feminism outside of psychology, okay. actually, because I was really on an academic track. Um, I did work at places that contributed knowledge, because um, I wanted to do research, mm -hmm. I knew that, mm -hmm. to, uh, uh, enable feminist activists to do the work that they were doing. Mm -hmm. I did attend the Feminist and the Scholar conference, but not the one in 1984 that was about sexuality. Okay. I attended a different one, so I guess, but that again is sort of at the crossroads of activism and academia right. at Barnard. I was in, lived in New York at the time. Um, I worked for the Alan Guttmacher Institute, which mm -hmm. is the, was the research affiliate of Planned Parenthood. Um, so, not a very feminist organization, mm -hmm. but certainly a context in which I could see how not having a feminist or mm -hmm. orientation really limited the questions that were being asked and thus the information that was being gleaned. Mm -hmm. um, so things like noticing that none of the people, mainly men, gathering all the information about abortion statistics had ever been in an abortion clinic. Mm -hmm. Right, and saying, well, there's something wrong with this picture. There's more to the story than this. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and at the same time, I was, I was not, well, I went, I went to school for a little while because I could take classes for free, so I did. Um, I did a lot of reading. And at the time, the things that were really uh, being focused on, particularly around sexuality, was pornography. Mm -hmm. uh, take Back the Night was just starting to really, really get off the ground. Radical feminism uh, versus, I suppose, liberal feminism. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, this is really within sexuality mm -hmm. that these were the conversations and arguments that were going on. It's called the sex wars. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, is, is anything a woman wants sexually, uh, is that women's sexuality, is that female sexuality, mm -hmm. or is it impossible for women to know what they really want because we were all walking around with false consciousness, mm -hmm. that, which was essentially what Catherine McKinnon argued and right. Susan Griffin argued, well, the only way we can really know our sexuality is to leave the society and uh, you know just live as women and then we'll find out. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've read and read and read because I had a nine to five job, so mm -hmm. I could read you know, a book a day. Right. Um, and in New York, you can you know go to all these used bookstores. And since I had no money at <laughs> all, uh, you know, get a used book for a quarter. Um, yeah. So I immersed myself in that. And so it in in the beginning, it, it's always been a very intellectual um, pursuit for me, uh, as opposed to a you know go out and stand on the sidewalk. Mm kind of experience. I mean, I did at that time, I don't know if, if you all know about this, there were women, there was feminists on the streets of New York um, really fighting against pornography who had these, these blow up of Hustler magazine, one particular Hustler magazine cover, which had a meat grinder with right, a woman with being put into it, yeah. um, you know, trying to collect money to support the movement. And th that there was a group, and I'm, I'm blanking on the name, FOAP, mm -hmm. I think it was. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that really was trying to do some work. Uh, that very strange bedfellows started developing, uh, very conservatives, uh, conservative folks who wanted to ban pornography to ban sex mm -hmm. uh, were uh, aligning, or, or feminists were aligning with them because they wanted to ban these, these terrible images and et cetera mm -hmm. about women. And that always, that's never a good idea. <laughs> okay. Always goes wrong, never a good idea. So that was sort of the context in which I came up. 